All right, answer the following questions about the structures that contain only sulfur and fluorine. The compounds SF4, which would be sulfur tetrafluoride and boron trifluoride react to form this ionic compound. Um, according to the following equation, okay, neither here nor there. I draw this Lewis structure, so basically I would start by putting the S and then I'd put the Fs around the outside evenly spaced because it doesn't look like in two dimensions what it looks like in three anyhow. This guy has two, it wants eight, I need six dots, I need six dots, I need six dots. And then don't forget about the central atom, two, four, six. And then when you do ORP, you get 6 and 6, and 6 is 18, 20. That takes care of the dots, 22, 24, 26. And so ORP is 26. And then VE is going to be 6, because sulfur is in group 6A, and 7 plus 7 plus 7. Minus 1, if you have a plus 1 charge, that means this gave away an electron. And so 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21. 21 minus 1 is 20, and 20 plus 6 is 26. So however you get it, uh, these two numbers match. That means this structure is okay, but I have to go back and put it in brackets and put a plus 1 or a plus charge on the outside. What type of hybridization? So what I would do is if you look at this picture, you can see that it's an A, B, 3, E, 1. And so what you need is you need four atomic orbitals to hybridize. Three of the orbitals are the bonding orbitals, but then you also have this lone pair. Three plus one is four, so that means that this would be sp3 hybridization. One s and three p hybridize to make three equivalent sp, sorry, four equivalent sp3 orbitals. Um, and then that would take care of it. All right, so then, identify the geometry, and that is trigonal pyramidal. Um, we've done enough of these, but let me just draw the picture because sometimes it's hard to memorize. So here's your central atom. Here's the parent structure. The parent structure is tetrahedral. Um, this one comes out. Sorry, that's a bad picture. Um, this one goes back in the plane. There's your one, two, three, four, but then when you erase this top one, um, you can kind of see there's the trigonal, there's the pyramid, so it's trigonal pyramidal. Um, predict whether the S, that fluorine to sulfur to fluorine bond angle is larger than, e equal to, or smaller than um, 109.5, and it would be less than 109.5. Um, 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 and we talked about how lone pair um, on the central atom. Um, take up more space, however you want to say this. You can look at the uh, guidelines. Um, the, um, it's because of Vesper theory, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory which says that if we go back to this, um, these uh, are close to these, and so um, their force is a little stronger, and so they push, going back to this picture, this lone pair that we erased up here kind of smooshes these closer together because this lone pair right here that we don't draw in the picture take up more space, and they push things together. Um, draw the Lewis structure for SF5. So the first thing I would do, give myself some room. Here's the S. Here's F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. And then we do the dots. And if I do ORP, I get 6 times 5 is 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. And when I do VE, 
I get 6 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 1 because of this charge. And then 35, and 35 and 6 is 41, plus 1 is 42. And so this is, a, oh, by the way, when I was doing ORP here, if you have 10, you don't add anymore. But the math tells us that we need to add two dots. And so this ends up being an A, B, 5, E, 1. Um, what's the hybridization? Well, you've got five bonding orbitals and one orbital that's non-bonding, but it holds a lone pair. Five plus one is six, so you need six orbitals. So it would be 1s, 3p, and 2d all hybridized to make six equivalent orbitals. Um, and then coming over here, uh, what is the um, geometry? And that is square pyramidal. And that's because if you do the parent structure, you got a central atom, you got six things coming out of it. Oops, sorry, I drew that bad. I want to do over on that one. Okay, so when you go to draw this, let me do a different color. Um, so we get, um, we get four around the, it's kind of like an X, Y, Z um, deal. So we got four coming out. Like, um, so you get the X, Y, and Z axis, and then you get up, and then you get down. And then if you erase one of these, you erase the lone pair. Actually, probably for the sake of me being the worst drawer ever, maybe I should erase the bottom one. Um, here's a lone pair. Um, and so if you do that, you can kind of see that you would have a square base. And then these all go up and hit. And then so there's your square pyramidal. And what is the oxidation number in sulfur? OK, so here's kind of the rules. Um, so we have a cesium oxidation number plus the sulfur oxidation number since and five fluorine oxidation numbers. They have to add up to zero. So cesium is always plus one. Sulfur is what we're looking for. And fluoride is always minus one. Because this is the group one rule. And then, so we get one plus x minus five equals zero. x minus four equals zero. x is four. So that's the answer.